Okay, hello, Facebookers. It is, it's, it's me, it's me, Coach Seth Gibson. We're doing it again. Um, it's a, God, I want to say beautiful day. Actually, you know, about 30 minutes ago, it was a beautiful day in Seattle. It was nice and sunny. It was cold as balls out. What's up, Ronnie? Good to see you, brother. Um, and now the, the the snow clouds have rolled in. It's, it's funny, uh, watching social media, I can actually see that it's snowing in various parts of the Pacific Northwest. I think Tacoma is getting some snow. I heard Capitol Hill is getting some snow. That means nothing to you guys who aren't in Seattle. Sorry. Uh, I'm downtown, so nothing yet. There's some precipitation, but um, <clears throat> no snow yet. That's all right. All good. Um, yeah, so today I was going to... What is going on? Not much, brother. Not much. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's like I said, it's a nice Sunday. I'm here uh, working on my website a little bit. Um, going to try and get that launched this week, actually. End of this week, uh, I'm going to put up a final mock-up for uh, my uh, my mentor, Sarah, and I are going to review that tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, hopefully have a, have, have some kind of a real web presence by the end of the week. I'm, I'm trying to get all this stuff done. Um, actually, another fun fun kind of thing to announce. My, my GDC talk finally got scheduled, so... Uh, some of you guys know I will be speaking at the Game Developers Conference on in San Francisco in March, actually on uh, mobility, mobility and joint health for game developers. Game developers, software professionals, you know, tech professionals, basically all the guys who, all of us who sit here at our desks and do this for eight hours a day and have horribly internally rotated shoulders and tight pecs and, and horrible, horrible spinal conditioning. So that'll be fun. But yeah, I'm trying to like I said, get all my, get, get established basically. So that way when I go to GDC, if people are interested in, uh, you know, in movement coaching or any of that stuff, we'll be able to talk about that a little bit. We'll be able to direct them to some services. And, uh, for anybody who ends up watching this later, or if you're on this now, who's going to game developers conference, I will have my FMS kit with me, uh, which means I will be available for movement screens. So if you'd like a movement screen, it's free to anybody at the conference, but, it's first come, first serve, and I can only do so many of them. So if you see this and you want one, let me know. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? So GDC Talk, so that's that's going well. Viking Ninja stuff. Any cool Viking Ninja stuff to talk about? Um, yes, the Viking Ninja podcast is coming. Some folks asked me about that, so I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, building my brochures right now. Yeah. Hey, hey Ronnie, uh, can you throw up a link to – to control and conquer in the in the chat so people can can head over to your page and follow that you guys um yeah i, I mentioned this i think yesterday on the uh, am icebreaker but any folks who are in the boise area um check out check this page out i'm gonna have have Ronnie toss up the link in the chat but uh if you're looking for fitness uh self-defense self-defense and fitness training um this guy's uh this guy's gonna hook you up uh, hopefully we'll get him out to a Viking Ninja seminar when we're out there in June for the what we're calling the full camp workout, and uh, we'll I'll talk about that a little bit on the uh, let's see on the next uh, on the next Viking Ninja podcast, which I'm going to try and start firing up this week. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do that live. I think it's just going to be yeah, I think it's just going to be <clears throat> um, kind of me and a camera. And at some point, it'd be nice to have some maybe get some guests on. That's the plan. Get the uh, obviously all the Viking Ninja coaches on, community members, people who influence us. And uh, that's something I'd like to hear from you guys is, uh, you know, I put a call out a little while ago about this, but any of you guys who have suggestions about who you'd like to hear on the Viking Ninja podcast, or if you'd like to be on the Viking Ninja podcast and, you know, you, you know, you've been to a course, you're teaching it, you're somehow adjacent to Viking Ninja training, let us know. Um, yeah, so let's see. I uh, had a question from Rick Brown, uh, obviously satire. Didn't I see you in the Black Panther movie? No, not yet, sadly. Uh, although I'm, I'm definitely not opposed to at some point doing some fight choreography or, uh, or stunt doubling or whatever. Uh, God, I don't know if I want to get my Screen Actors Guild union membership. I remember there was a time that that was almost going to be a thing um, <clears throat> back in the day. I think when I was working in, when I was working in games still and this, and there was this whole dust up about voice actors and and the Screen Actors Guild and how oh my god everybody who's in games is going to have to get a SAG B be part of this like you know some union okay but it's completely off topic but yeah so that's the answer to that question no sadly you did not see me in Black Panther yet but one of these days uh, let's see what else? Uh, I was gonna. I uh, got a got a quick another question about uh, dry fasting. So I mentioned on my last two AMI icebreakers that I've been dry fasting, and 
this is actually something new to me. Um, uh, dry fasting is basically fast, and in addition to fasting, you cut out cut out water, so you're completely fasting dry. And I just recently started. Um, I've just recently started kind of experimenting with it. Uh, I'm on to our about hour 40 of my second uh, experiment. So I've had nothing to eat or drink for about the last 40 hours and I actually feel really good. Um, I worked out yesterday and I'm going to work out today probably after this is done. And uh, let me toss up a link to a YouTube video um, that uh, I was watching. Give me like five seconds. Let's see. Uh, Tom is still out dry fasting. It's funny. There's not a ton of videos on dry fasting. Um, but uh, yeah, here's the one I watched. And it's going up in the chat. <clears throat> there we go. And so uh, if you're curious about dry fasting at all, check that out. Um, if you're curious about fasting in general, you know, IF, there's a ton of good resources out there. We can talk about that at some point. Um, let's see. And, uh, I, you know, I talked about this a little bit on my, um, <clears throat> on my AM icebreaker this morning. Uh, I can fast for 12. Yeah, you know, it's definitely something I, I found I had to practice when I first started doing IF, God, years and years ago. Yeah, I think I think probably 12 is my limit. But, I, you know, I mean, I can fast for a couple of days. Now. But like I said, I've been doing this fast now for since, I guess, since Friday night. And Pam, how you doing, Pam? So Pam, everyone's met Pam at FRA in, uh, in out at the On Academy um, and a uh, very, very accomplished uh FRC FRA movement coach. So if you're where are you in you in Dallas or Houston or where where are you, Pam? Like let, let the folks know. So if anybody's in your area, they can uh, <clears throat> they can hit you up for some services. I hope. Um, and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll hopefully we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll get to a workshop again sometime. Uh, I'm actually planning on auditing FRA sometime in the next year, and uh, do kin stretch in May. I hope so. That'll be fun. Um, but, uh, let's see, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So, yeah. So, so Ronnie, to your, your, your point about fasting, um, just, you know, I think it's just practice. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like everything, you know, it's, it's, you got to kind of condition your body to it. And, um, you know, I found, I found that getting good sleep helps. Um, Pam is in Houston. Okay. So any of you folks who are in Houston and if you're looking for, um, movement coaching, FRC work, you know, functional range conditioning, um, hit Pam up. She, like I said, we had some good conversations at FRA. She, I've been following her since then. She's, like I said, very accomplished, very, very smart practitioner, and she can absolutely hook you up. So, so uh, yeah, if, I know you've got a personal pay, or a business page, Pam. Do you want to throw that up in the chat so people can people can see where you are and maybe give you a follow, hopefully. Um, so, but yeah, but yeah, no, Ryan, I, I don't, I know you, you talked about, you know, you, you're doing some recomp and some, so give it a shot, you know, see if, you know, maybe go, um, you know, work up to, you know, I mean, if you're, if you can go 15, try to go 16, you know, I mean, most people say 16, eight is a good kind of intermittent fasting window. And, you know, the other thing that I found helped me a lot too was, um, getting onto, a more of a, I, I, we'll say keto type diet, you know, so basically, Oh, there we go. So, so yeah, Pam Owens Fitness and PamOwensFitness.com, you guys. So, yeah, go go check that out. Give her page a like and a follow. And, uh, yeah, like I said, let, let her know. You know I'm, yeah, no worries, Pam. I, I, like I said, you're, I, I'm a fan of your work. I've been following you on, on Instagram since we met. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to put other, other awesome people out there. Um, you know, like, let's all, let's all, like I said, let's all get better together. You know, let's not, let's not, let's not hide. Let's not, uh, Let's not, you know, let's not circle our wagons. Let's all let, let's all help each other out, right? <clears throat> um, so, um, but um, let's see. So I was talking about fasting. Yeah. So that's that's that. Um, like I said, go, you know, kind of getting your diet even, getting, you know, getting good sleep. That's because I've noticed too. Like when I'm when I'm stressed, um, I can't do it quite as well. Um, thankfully, I'm at a point in my life where my stress levels have sort of, you know, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a very stress-free time right now. I've got a, got a great day job. I've got, you know, a lot of other stuff is working for me. So, I mean, I do have to start apartment hunting again here soon. That's a little stressful, but not horrid, um, thankfully. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so, um, and that, that was actually kind of what I wanted to talk about when I mentioned I wanted to talk a little bit about supplementation today. 
And uh, so let's just dive into that because <clears throat> uh, actually, thanks, thanks, thanks for hosting that chat the other night, Ronnie. Um, uh, you actually got me thinking a lot about kind of how I approach supplementation, and it's it's really interesting because you know back in the, and I think I mentioned this on on my AMI speaker the other day, but uh, and uh, you, you guys have yeah subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to if you want to follow up on this or see any of my AMAs or and uh, icebreakers. Actually, I'll grab a link to that real quick to my channel. Oh no, and here's a awesome giant link. Hey, well, thank, you know, thank, thanks for having me on, brother. I mean, like I said, anytime, yeah, we, we got to do a, a joint Instagram stream or something at some point. Like I said, I know I want to have you on the on the Viking Ninja podcast uh, at some point. You know, maybe, maybe uh, it's definitely after uh, after the full camp workout. Um, so, but anyway, but yeah, you know, back to what I was saying about supplementation, you know, is the idea that I, I think used to be, you know, and, and you still hear people say this, and I agree with this to some, some uh, extent, the idea that you can get most of what you need for, for, from real food, whole foods. And, that, and that's true. And there's a lot of stuff, like, for example, I know, I know BCAAs, for example, has been a hot topic recently and more and more studies have, have come out that have, that have kind of been, um, I guess I've kind of been bearing out that idea that, you know, as long as your protein level, your protein intake is fine. Yeah. BCAs probably aren't going to really put you over the edge or help you that much. Um, so I think while that's all true, what I've, what I've noticed and what I've seen as kind of the quality of supplements gets better. And as we're learning more about how that stuff all works and interacts with our, you know, with our metabolism and our, and our, you know, our neurotransmitters, all, all those things that supplement that any kind of supplementation can affect. Um, I, I think we're finding that it, it's a lot easier to use specific supplements to really kind of condition different parts of kind of our, our performance general. So if we look at performance as, as uh, there, there's a couple of components I'd look at in performance, there's, you know, there's nutrition, there's recovery, and then there's training. And if we think about each one of those as part of a whole, but still an individual component, we, we can actually think about supplementing each one of those. For example, what I like to, one of the things I like to tell people is that supplements work best when, you know, when your diet is on point, when your nutrition is on point, when you're, and your recovery is on point, you know, if you're stressed, if you're, and you're not eating well, you know, you've got lots of inflammation from either what you're eating or, or the fact that you're under stress, in fact, you're injured you know, you're pro you know, or you're dehydrated or, you know, anything like that. Obviously certain processes aren't going to work as well as they should. So anything you take in is not going to be absorbed as optimally as it could be. Right. So if we think about, um, so we think, so if we start with say recovery, right, to me, that's, that's the foundation for everything. That's, you know, that's everything from what you do after you work out to, how you're sleeping to what you do before you work out to, to kind of set yourself up for that and what you do all the time outside of the gym in addition to sleeping and nutrition. Uh, but we can start with, but if we think about sleep, for example, you know, things like melatonin and things like ZMA. So, you know, if sleep is an issue, look into that and find, find some supplements that work for you. Me, I take the, the on it TPC night packs and the melatonin spray. That works great. <clears throat> um, I, yeah, that's, I know some people have expressed, uh, I guess feeling groggy on the melatonin. Um, I've felt that sometimes, but I've noticed it's only if something else is off. Like I said, like say if I haven't eaten well or so again, that kind of, and, and I'm not a, I'm not an RD. I'm not a nutritionist. Pam, Pam says recovery is where the magic happens. Absolutely. See, and that's, that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned way back when is, you know, especially in the last three years, um, you know, you know, people ask me like, you know, why is it that I, I love, you know, movement training and durability work so much? It's because I think that's the big missing piece to everybody's recovery. You know, I mean, you know, we all think that like go to the gym, smash yourself in the gym, you know, slam your post-workout shake and you're fine. It's like, but there's a huge component to, uh, you know, there's a huge missing component to that, you know, because, you know, are you down regulating your nervous system properly? And so even, you know, even breath work can be, it can be a supplement, but really breath work is a foundation. But, um, so yeah, I mean, so we start with recovery. So we dial in our recovery. So, so look at recovery, look at supplements that might help you with recovery and not just, like I said, not just post-workout and, you know, look at things that, that treat that maybe can help you address if you're if you're super stressed it might help you address your, your cortisol levels it might help you get better sleep it might help you relax it might help you down regulate then you can start looking at 
you know, nutritional supplements. You can start looking at performance supplements, things like, you know, what do you take for pre-workout? What do you take for peri-workout? What do you take post-workout? And, you know, those are fairly simple. Um, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Of course, there's a lot of crap out there, but, um, I think it's probably not hard to kind of find good stuff. And, and, and it's like everything, you know, do, do your research. You know, I said, I said this on my AM on my uh, icebreaker this morning, you know, do your homework, do your research. Um, you know, if you have specific questions about supplements for me, and I, I'm happy to tell you what my stack is, you know, hit me up. Um, you know, I take a bunch of different stuff and, and it changes, you know, right now I, like I said, I'm dry, I'm doing this dry fast thing and then I'll go back to, um, another kind of sort of low calorie, ish type thing because i'm trying to cut right now i'm trying to you know I've, I've never been one who's been really good about the long sustained cuts i mean you can do it you can definitely do it um and i know and 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 there's different schools of thought right? some people say yeah if you want if you have a lot of weight to lose lose it over a long term there's some people who say no no like like lose the weight quickly and then make lifestyle changes um like i said both can work um, I've done my, my big issue is, uh, so I've, I've done, I've done them both. I've done the fast ones and I've done the slow ones. The problem, the, the issue with when I did a fast weight cut last time was that I didn't have a plan afterwards. So do I skip supplements during this big fast? Um, right now, yes. Like until Monday, just because obviously I'm not taking anything in, but no, no, when I, when I, um, when I'm doing just kind of a normal IF or like, you know, I'll be doing a liquid fast, like, no, I absolutely take supplements. So I'll take, uh, that's actually one I'll take branch chain amino acids, for example, you know, BC, I just use a uh, biotest BCA powder. Um, so, and then for pre and post workout, you know, absolutely, you know, dial up the, the plasma and the mag 10, and maybe maybe some protein maybe maybe a protein shake um you know i like the quest nutrition protein and then of course everything else you know um you know things like turmeric curcumin you know things to keep inflammation down because you know when you're you know when you're doing a super super high calorie or low calorie faster cut i mean obviously you're you know you're gonna you have a higher propensity for dialing up your stress levels um so um, yeah, uh, and infl anti-inflammation stuff. So, you know, krill oil, you know, I mean, the on a TPC packs have, have krill oil in them. Um, sometimes I'll take biotest flame out. Um, it just kind of depends, but yeah, I have absolutely use supplements when I'm, when I'm like, when I'm doing a normal fast, like I said, right now during a dry fast or, or if I decide to do, if I want to use like a pure water fast, which I don't do very often, um, usually I'll either IF or actually I'm going to probably start dry fasting a little, little more. I mean, obviously not on a super regular basis, but, um, I got to say, I, I'm feeling really good on this, you know, but I've been doing IF for a while. So maybe that's why, you know, maybe, maybe that's why, like, you know, I, I don't feel totally crappy. You know I mean? Like, like my body's just good at fasting or, or my metabolism is just is so beat to hell from doing all the crazy things I've done over the years. And I'm, I was just like, ah, screw it. You're doing something stupid again. Fine. So hopefully not. I mean, that, that's another one of those things I'm going to have to dive into. There's so many interesting things uh, nutritionally I have to dive into. You know, I mean, you know, Ronnie, we were talking about the carnivore diet on Friday. Um, that was actually really fun. And, it's and you know, following Sean Baker um, on uh, on YouTube has been a lot. Of, actually, let me toss his uh, – any of you guys who are – because I know a bunch of folks have asked me about carnivore diet. So let me toss up Dr. Sean Baker's YouTube. And you can check him out as well. Let's see, is this him? This is him. There he is. <clears throat> but he posted something yesterday about uh, um, do we need fruits and vegetables? I think was the name of the video. You know, if that's if that's not a um, you know if that's, that's not oh my god kind of video. Like yeah, here come here come here come the, the trolls in the flame war. But that's actually what really got me thinking because you know he mentioned that most of our, our reasoning behind including fruits and vegetables in our, in our diets is, you know, epidemiology studies in there. And we still don't, other than, I mean, like a lot of stuff, right. Other than, than certain studies and certain RCTs and a lot of anecdotal, you know, observation, we, we don't know for sure. But, you know, one of the things that proponents of things like keto and carnivore diets always point to is that there are certain indigenous groups out there that survive on, you know, on, pretty much an, an all animal products diet just because that's what's available and you know when when we do uh when we do a study of these groups you know they they're not found lacking in health you know it's not it, it's not 
and again, I'm, I've only just started researching this stuff, so don't anybody come at me like I'm some kind of, you know, PhD. I'm not. This is just the stuff I've read in the last probably couple, in the last couple months since I started looking into the, the carnivore diet. Uh, is that um, there? You know, these populations are really lacking for not having fruits and vegetables. And now there's there's also, but that said, there's a, there's an argument you can make that says if you have these things available, you might as well eat them because you know because they're because maybe they're they're beneficial. Um, I think we can make that argument about a lot of things. But again, that just goes back to this idea that uh, you know you got to do your homework. You got to see what's up. Um, me, for example, you know, I tried the carnivore, like a lot of guys, you know, I saw Sean Baker on the JRE, what's up Joe Rogan podcast. Um, and, uh, and I thought, wow, that sounds cool. You know, and knowing that I did well on a keto style diet and that I've done well on protein spraying modified fasts, I figured, well, why not? Let's just, let's try this. You know, that's another thing, you know, if you have some leeway, you know, experiment on yourself, you know, I mean, you really are like your best lab. Um, you know, I mean, you know, anybody who knows me will tell you the whole reason I got into all this this fitness stuff years and years ago was because I wanted to be better at martial arts. And because I, I have that, that crazy software engineer techie brain, you know, I dove into research. So research has been part of fitness for me since day one. And, and, and you find out a lot of stuff, you know, I mean, you know, something that I don't want to rant too much about because I'm a little close to it. But um you know, I, I saw one of the things that I really don't tolerate, especially in the fitness industry, where so much is at stake is people who kind of have their, you know, like like to circle their wagons and have their their sort of will, their, you know, basically keep everything, keep their cards close to your chest. Uh, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about it. Uh, I am a human computer, sadly. Yeah, man, it's probably I don't have a social life. <laughs> thanks for thanks for that, Ronnie. Um, but yeah, no, I, I am definitely I'm definitely a nerd. Like, and you know, like I said, I, I go deep. But um, yeah, and like I said, I think that's why I don't like that that idea, especially nowadays when there's so much info out there. Um, you know, some uh, there was a, a Facebook thread that I got pulled into a little while back, and and I'm not gonna go into detail, but y you know, some folks were were attacking a, a friend of mine's um, uh, kind of kind of fitness pursuit, and you know, this and full disclosure, you know, just I mean, even if this guy weren't a friend of mine, you know, looking at his work, his work is incredible, and 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 it, it's very resonant on and honestly if you're a fitness professional um actually i'm gonna I'm, yeah i'm gonna shout this guy out uh you know coach aaron guyet uh formerly of innovative results the honored academy battle ropes master coach and uh, uh founder of battle ropes education uh look that guy up uh, actually i'm gonna throw up a link to him too because aaron's my boy and he has done a lot of amazing things for me and so i think everybody should everybody should you know and even if you even if you're not much of a battle ropes guy, it's funny. I was actually not a battle ropes guy until I took Aaron's course. And it's not that I was pro or anti battle ropes. I just didn't know anything about him, but talking to him and having done his course a couple times and realizing that it's not just about battle ropes. It's, it's what he calls it programming metabolic pathways. So, and he, so basically it's learning how to train each of your energy systems, he just uses the battle rope as the lens to show you how to train all those because it's so easy to move between energy systems with the battle rope. And, um, but where's it going with this? Oh yeah, just just the fact that, you know, to, to look at something and write it off because you just see it. I mean, again, it's that whole, it's that thing we say, it's, it's that thing we say, we've been taught since we're little, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, and I've said this too, at the same time, you know, I mean, definitely keep your bullshit filter a little active because there's so much stuff out there, but don't, you know, don't, don't just shut things off just because, and just because your initial contact with it is a little odd, um, you know, do some research. And then at the end of the day, if, 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 if your research bears out that, okay, yeah, this is total snake oil, that's cool. You know, you're, like I said, you're allowed to trust your, and you're definitely allowed to trust your own research. Uh, I have used them as often as possible. I'm, dude, man, I, I, like I said, after taking Aaron's course, I, I mean, yeah. And, and it's funny too, because I actually use battle ropes now. Let's talk about battle ropes for a little bit. I actually use battle ropes now for static work more than I do for dynamic work. Um, as, as fun as it is doing, using them for things like alternating waves and stuff like that. Um, things like windmills and Turkish get-ups and presses, do overhead presses with a battle rope. Like a battle rope torch press is still one of the most challenging exercises I can think of. Um, I, I was actually doing, I was actually trying to do a, 
it was a get up. There's, you know, you've seen people do it. It's the kind of the Turkish get up to windmill combination. I was trying to do that with the battle rope and that's just, that's the craziest thing ever. But, um, so, you know, you never know. I mean, get out there, see what people are doing, you know, see where, and, and you never know. I mean, you know, like I mentioned, you know, you know, Pam's stuff, you know, Pam, Pam works with golfers. And, uh, when I went to perform better, I, I heard a lot of uh, talks, you know, talks from like some of the TPI folks. And I never really, not that I'm anti-golf, I just, again, I just didn't know anything about it, but then hearing how they were talking about rotation and anti-rotation training and and thinking to myself, oh, well, that dovetails very much with what sh what they teach at the Young Academy. And on top of that, that dovetails incredibly with, uh, oh, hey, Melissa, what's up? And that dovetails incredibly with what um, what I've learned from the FMS, you know, um, and, and even now it goes into Viking Ninja training, you know, Viking Ninja body weight. Um, some of the stuff we do is, uh, is very, very geared towards anti-rotational training. And, you know, so seeing how all these different disciplines, you know, train things, you know, train towards the same end, I guess. I mean, because ultimately that's what we're all doing. I mean, ultimately we're all going the same place. You know, we're all trying to move faster or lift more or move better or, you know, perform better there's a plug sponsor me perform better please like um but um <clears throat> you know so uh yeah like i said do your homework um do your research get out there and try new things um especially i think the bigger your voice the the, the further your reach you know the more i mean that's that's the big reason that i've been kind of really pounding the continual ed pavement for the last three years um you know, I am definitely the quintessential cert junkie, and I, I don't mind that at all. Actually, shout out to my friend Aubrey, who's about to hit the road, and uh, or uh, and uh, I think she's going on an extended, um, continuing ed run. But uh, you know, but yeah, but, you know, starting with the On Academy, and then from On Academy, I you know I learned about FRC and Box and Burn, and from FRC and Box and Burn, I learned about all this other stuff, and. You know, and it's cool to, like I said, I, th I think it's great to be able to bring all this stuff back together because for me, as somebody who's trying to be a fitness professional, it was super, super helpful to help me figure out um, kind of where I wanted to go. You know, when I first started with the On Academy three years ago, I didn't really know. I was like, ah, yeah, sure, I'm just going to go into strength and conditioning training and then working with, you know, working through things like the durability coursework and now, like, you know, mentoring under Sarah for almost the last year and realizing that, like, like we were saying, recovery. I think, you know, Pam said it best, recovery is where the magic happens. Absolutely. And so, and learning that, like, you know, for me, that's how, I think that's how I really like to take care of people is, you know, because because there's a lot of folks out there who are doing great work in in S and C, and some of them are even on this chat. Ronnie, Melissa, you know, great trainers. Um, and I think I think that's one side of the equation. But I also think you know there are people who are going. I think more and more people are going to start specializing in this stuff. You know, look at um look at John Russin. You know, I love John. He's a uh, probably one of my favorite people in the industry now that I've gotten to talk with him and hang out with him a bit. And he's doing functional strength you know, functional strength conditioning plus PT work. And that to me is genius to be that, that kind of hybrid, to be the guy who can, who can do strength training, but also do hands-on treatment, like to kind of help, help sort of with the PT aspect. And you know, that's kind of, as much as I don't want to go back to school, so that's why I'm going to go back to, go back to massage school or go to massage school, try again to it either this fall or next year. With my, you know, just like, like my buddy Travis, uh, who's also going to a uh, massage school for the same reason. You know, Washington State is interesting. If you, you know, any sort of hands-on licensing grants you that sort of sc PT scope of practice, you know, so that'd be cool. Then I could actually go to go to FR Spine and, you know, all the FR courses and actually get the cert, which would be nice. Um, wow. That was an epic all over the place rant. Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, so there's a couple folks on the stream. I know we talked a little bit about supplementation. I ran it a bit about education, protein, all kinds of things. Um, uh, let's see, usually I cut this off in about half an hour, but I got okay. You know, I can hang out. It's Sunday. I'm just like I said, I'm just here working on my website, working on some Viking Inch flyers. Uh, I don't know. I might take a break and play some games in a bit. Uh, let's see. Do I have anything anything else interesting coming up? Uh, let's see. Nothing this month. March twenty fourth. I think I'll be in Colorado for Bella Strength. Ooh, actually, here. Let me show you guys something cool. Let me see. Let me see if this actually works. Now that I have the screen sharing plugin. Oh no! I don't. Oh no! Apparently, you can only do that from. Can I do it from up here? 
No, I can't. Oh no! All right, I have to figure out how to. How to I'll have to figure out how to do uh, how to do screen shares so I can show you guys this uh, this thing I'm working on. Um, um, yeah, Ronnie, I'm building brochures. So ramble on. Oh, cool. Yeah, if you, yeah, like I said, uh, yeah, send send me uh, if you do a digital copy, send me send me some of those. Brad, Brad Hutchins, what's up, Brad? Uh, if you guys don't know Brad, if you're an Onnit tribe, you know you know Brad Hutchins. He's the guy who's always posting those crazy Mason Club videos. Uh, I think you're what you're prepping for uh, the Arnold now, right, Brad? You're going to the Vintage Strength Games. Gonna gonna follow in Leo's footsteps and go show him how it's done. I hope. Um, we'll do. Yeah, no, seriously, dude. And any of you guys who are doing who are doing events or whatever, you know, send me send me your uh, yeah, send, send me your stuff. If if you've got digital stuff, you know, I'll, I'll put it on Instagram. I'll put it up on on my page. I'll blast it out there. How's uh how's your training for for vintage strength going, Brad? Um, checking out your your videos, great stuff, man. Like I said, dude, you are leaning way the hell out. You look you look really good, man. You look so yeah. Keep whatever you're doing, it's working for you. But yeah, I'm stoked to stoked to watch your performance at the Arnold in a in a bit. So, um, yeah, Alex, yeah, that's something I'm trying to do. Actually, I think I told a couple folks this, but I have a uh, my my first my first Masters Jiu Jitsu tournament in July. I've never never having rolled in a Masters bracket before, so that'll be exciting. Um, that's the other reason I'm cutting right now is because I want to get my get get back down to fighting weight now and not have to scramble to do it in June or when I'm traveling and doing all kinds of crazy Viking ninja stuff and having to teach workshops and so <clears throat> uh, going good. Thank you, awesome man. Well, like I said, if uh, uh, if, uh, if I can help you out anyway, you know, if you need need some movement and mobility support, let me know. I'm happy to happy to put a program together for you. Or yeah, yeah. Like I said, let me know, dude. Um, yeah, stoked for you. I think uh, I think I think you're gonna do good stuff. You're gonna get out there and show them how it's done. So yeah, you and Leo both. And uh, are, are you? Am I am I still gonna see you at AFM, Brad? We we still doing that in in April? I hope so because I'd love to meet you and work out with you, and that would be awesome. When am I competing? Let's see. I am competing in July. Let me look up the date for that. Actually, I think it's like the first week of July. It's a big tournament they do in Seattle. Uh, they've been doing it for decades now, called the Revolution. Um, I was actually it was actually the first tournament I was going to do years and years ago, July twenty first and twenty second. So that's when I'll be competing. I'll touch base. Mobility is my new focus. Cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I saw you've been doing, uh, Brad. I saw you've been doing like some animal flow stuff too, which uh, I got to get back into that. So still over a year, and I still haven't tested out for for AF for AF one. Um, which is which sucks because because uh, animal flow two is coming to Seattle uh, in April, and that's that's going to be taught by Mike Fitch. So it's like, got to got to get my shit together and go do that. Just because I mean. More just because I want to meet Mike Fitch. I mean, that guy, like, you know, I've been following his stuff since I did Animal Flow, and he's he's brilliant. Like, he he gets the whole, like, you know, he understands that it's not just about doing fancy movements. There's actually, like, real conditioning and real ideas behind why you want to move the way you, you do. So I'd, I'd love to sit down and just pick his brain for a bit. But <clears throat> we'll see. Actually, um, that's a crazy weekend, April 14th, because Box and Burn has come to Seattle, too, and I kind of want to audit my Box and Burn as well kind of ugly yeah dude i hear you brad i mean i think uh, when when i when i started animal flow it was the same and it was funny because i had a background and stuff like that you know i've been doing couple whatever for many years and, and still like doing that i mean but it's kind of like same with the on it stuff though right i mean the first time you pick up i mean a mace or a club right it's just like what am i doing and then you know and then then you know and then look at you now right you're about to go compete so i mean for competition you have to know you have to be i mean competition is like yeah ultimate performance you've got to be you know you've got to have your chops you got to have your tech you got to have your efficiency dialed so you know yeah progress over time man but uh yeah i'm excited to see um kind of how the afm stuff for well, for those of you guys know uh, afm is art of functional movement and that's uh, uh paul gray and pablo veduto um let me throw up a link to their work too because i love both of those guys let's see art of functional movement academy and he's actually actually a Paul's out in the UK. I think Paul's in Poland, maybe. Um, but yeah, good stuff. More, more, um, more, more kind of unconventional style stuff. I know Paul. Uh, uh, something Paul's been doing for the last couple while that's really cool is uh, is, is rings. He's been doing a lot of training with not not suspended rings, but but weighted rings as kind of a he calls it um, 
what does he call it, Brad? He calls it like body geometry or something like that. I mean, I know the term geometry is in there somewhere, but um, but it's a it's a really cool idea. I went to a kind of a short seminar with him in Long Beach at the Long Beach Kettle Club. Uh, what's up, Eric? Which was awesome. <clears throat> and um, yeah, really really good stuff. I mean, he's all about tension and you know hold, like you know activation tension like and why you want to hold your, your body in certain positions um one of the things he showed me that was really cool that kind of dovetailed really nicely with some of the frc stuff was how to was, was some spinal bowing drills you know how to kind of kind of segment you know how to kind of work that segmentation that, that segmented activation back into your spine to be able to hit um yeah, just be able to like you know get that mobility back into any you know if you have a if you have any dead areas in your spine like like me sadly I mean I've got this horrible horrible hinge point in my uh it, down in my lumbar from years and years of being a software developer and not having standing desks which which I have now which is awesome um, sounds right okay yeah that's what I thought I I, I knew it was something like that I have I have a whole book of notes from that that Long Beach session Andrea what's up how you doing man I didn't, there's there's another one of my favorite people um uh so let's see actually let me throw up a link to that the new healthy body so this is andrea's gym there we go and i believe speaking of aaron guyette i believe uh aaron's gonna be aaron and rich are gonna be out at your gym in the near future is that is that correct um yeah sure enough um so yeah, and you guys who are in Northern California, I would get up there for that because, like I said, Aaron's Aaron's a great coach. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, no worries, no worries. I'm actually I'm actually running over. So, uh, so hey, so you're you're just in time as far as I'm concerned. Um, how you doing, Andrea? Like, what's what's new? How's that? How's 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 the gym treating you? I know I've been, been watching uh been watching all the stuff you guys have been throwing up there. Oops, and I cut off the. I cut off the H in your gym. Let me edit my comments so it looks properly. So it links properly. There we go. Yeah, awesome. Um, lost my train of thought. Where was I? Uh, right, Aaron Rich at Andrea's gym. If you're in, if you're in Northern California, you should get up there. Um, <clears throat> But uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's a lot of stuff. So yeah, you guys, questions, thoughts, rants, diatribes, anything? Anybody? Uh, anybody have anything they would like to? Any anything else you guys would like to hear me rant about? Uh, let's see, Pam, Thunder. Uh, let's see, what did I talk about? Talk about Viking. Like, just uh, talked about talked about supplements a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think that's all I got for now, guys. Um, so, wow, yeah, it's been almost 45 minutes, 40 minutes, 38, something like that. Um, so thank you, everybody. Like I said, we'll do this again next Sunday, of course, same time. And um, I'll probably – I'm actually probably going to break up my Instagram. So you let, so some of you guys know I was doing this uh, and also streaming to Instagram. So probably I'm going to do the Instagram streams on Saturday now. So if you're following me on Instagram, Coach Seth Gibson – a link to that, <clears throat> and I'll be going live there Saturday, same time, probably 12 p.m. Just because that's when I'm around, and that's when I'm when I feel like talking because I'm usually done with class about then. So, hey, okay, brother, thank you. You are moving. Hey, Brad, right back at you, man. I, you know I love your videos. I mean, I, you post that shit all day serious post i love that you post videos every day i love that you're always posting stuff in on it tribe uh, i love that you're posting stuff on instagram all the time it's it's and it's been it's super cool to see your progress man and like i said go to the arnold's crush it just destroy everybody take no prisoners um yeah man and i am like i said i'm i'm not blowing smoke over when i say i'm really looking forward to training with you at afm in april so oh uh, that's it i'm gonna get back to work Probably go drink some coffee. Oh, I can't drink coffee because I'm still dry fasting. No, it starts to suck. I had some pretty epic food dreams last night, so I guess my cut's working. But anyway, that's me. Like I said, you guys um, send me questions, and we will talk. Uh, you know, I'm always down to answer questions. We'll do it. Like I said, we'll, I do this every Sunday. There's an event on my page, Coach Seth Gibson. Uh, subscribe to the event, get notifications, leave me questions, and this will be up on my YouTube uh, probably in about ten minutes. So I'll post the link to that too if everyone wants to. 
share, watch it again. But thank you all for coming. And oh, hey, it started snowing. Yeah, all right. Peace. Wednesday rant. And yes, Wednesday rant with Ronnie, you guys. Ronnie, uh, Ronnie, throw, throw, you know what? Fine, I'll do it for you. Now, let me throw up a link to Control and Conquer real quick. Because uh, you guys should, you guys should. Because I love that you're doing. I love that you're doing the live streams. I love that you're doing the Wednesday rants. I can't wait to see you start posting video contents. Because I'm very excited about that. And uh, all right, for real, guys, it's been fun. Peace.